What's up everyone, my name is of course Tom and welcome to TechStream. Today, thanks to the guys at Sahara, we're taking a look at their new P10 Sync budget tempered glass RGB gaming case. First of all though, as always, let's roll on that intro. <coughs> So as I <coughs> so as I said, what we are taking a look at today is a budget tempered glass RGB case from the guys at Sahara. We've actually taken a look at a previous one of their cases a while ago, and I quite liked it for the money. It was quite good. What we've got here, though, is a new one from them. It is the P10 Sync, and the reason for the change in name or the sync on the end is well. We'll get into that later. So this is a standard sort of mid ATX case. It is quite a compact ATX case, quite wide, but quite short, not, not too uh, long or anything like that. Tempered glass side panel, plastic fronts and other side panel and things like that. But yeah, let's take a quick look. So we're gonna start off with the side panel. It is of course tempered glass held on with the traditional method of four just uh, standard thumb screws. I've already slackened these off so they'll be easy to come off. It is quite a heavily tinted panel. It's you're gonna need quite a decent amount of light. Well you can you can see in there reasonably well. But you'll need a decent amount of light to be able to show off your components. But as you can see, yeah. Reasonably tinted. It's still got plastic film on it and everything at the moment. But one thing I do note is one of one of the things that lets this case down is the fact that what they've basically done, if I remove these little rubber grommets. Is they basically just threaded four standard brass motherboard standoffs in, put a rubber grommet on it, and slapped a tempered glass panel on the top, which, as you'll notice, was the reason why the glass panel sat effectively on the outside of the case. Very much it is an afterthought. They've obviously used a chassis from something else because you've still got the standard sort of clips, and the actual the back panel will actually fit on this side as well. It is a budget case, you're gonna get uh, well, to save money, one of the things they've obviously had to do is to reuse a chassis from something else and spruce it up with a tempered glass side panel. We've got an all plastic front panel with a quite a nice LED uh, light strip running up the inside, which if I can just turn around so that you guys can see. As you can see, it actually, although it's only a small strip on the inside, it's quite a wide strip on uh, sorry, it's only a small strip on the outside. It's quite a big strip on the inside. It actually offers a lot of sort of illumination into the case. So I quite liked that. I do actually like very much like this LED strip and these fans. They do offer quite a lot of illumination. There is also under here sort of a very nice big open vent. So that should you add some extra intake fans, because the only fan that is included is this pirate turbo fan, as they call them, on the back. But it is addressable and everything like that is I would maybe put a couple of these. These are something else they sent me over. They sent me over three of them. These are their duo ring, which I think would suit the inside of this very well because they have rings on the front and the back, which does mean that if they're on the back of your case, you'll get some rearward illumination. But if you've got them mounted on the front as intakes, not only will you see them from the front, obviously you won't in this particular case, but if you've got a, a tempered pa panel on the front or a clear plastic panel, you'll see the front ring, while the back ring will illuminate the inside of the case quite well. Front I.O., quite basic. We've basically got power button, reset button, a couple of USB 2s, don't see that too often anymore, and a single USB 3.0. There's also a reset button for the LEDs, which if I press, you'll see. So it changes through all the modes. One thing I did notice with the lighting um, is that basically the the included fan at the rear doesn't match the strip at the front when it comes to colour wise. Now, my new fan matches the rear fan, these extra ones, so you can add these and don't have to worry, but it doesn't really match the front. It's the, the, the white, is, it is only the white to be fair. The whites are a slightly different colour. Um, it's, it happens when, when you don't have a dedicated white LED. So, yeah, it's going to happen. Unless you use exactly the same strips, which obviously they've not, you will find slight variations in whites between strips. 
it's not the end of the world. What I will do now though, is if I just unplug this so all the fans and lights come on, I can turn it around a bit more and we'll take a quick look at the back. So the, the rear side panel is a standard side panel fitted with a pair of thumb screws and he says to remove it. It does just pull off like a normal side panel. Now if I flip that round, as you can see this is the included sync controller. Now the P35 that I saw last time, uh, the, the controller and the fans and that lot, they were all extras but the controller and the rear fan and the front LED strip are actually all included. So this does actually offer very good value for money. It's actually a £40 case with the fan, the controller and everything. You can add some extras of these for £8 each should you wish. So on the back we've got, a, on the bottom, on the back, bottom, eh, back of the case, a pair of 3.5 inch hard drive mounts, a pair of 2.5 inch SSD or um, laptop type drive mounts here. Hard drive space is small, you're not going to be fitting big 1200 watt power supplies into this case but then again you're not going to be fitting a system that needs a 1200 watt power supply into a case like this. So yeah, let them off. There's no rubber grommets on any of the cable routing holes but there is a decent amount of cable routing holes. There's a, a few cable um, tie clips dotted around the place. Mm, is there enough? For the sort of system that you're going to be putting in here, yeah, there's probably enough cable tie mounting holes so you can't really great that uh, Grade them, downgrade them, shall we say, on that. Nice big hole behind the motherboard tray should you need to change coolers without removing your motherboard. All in all, it's looking quite good. Now this little controller, as well as having buttons on here, we've got some buttons, some extra buttons, so you'll never use these. You do have the RGB on the top here. Also, I forgot to mention, you do actually get a little infrared remote control, which can do uh, preset modes, RGBs, LED speeds, as well as fan speeds. We haven't got to the other thing about this case though, and that is the part in the name where it says sync. And the reason it says sync is it comes with this little cable coming out of the top, and this extra one. And what this is, this is PWM, okay, so this is to sync the fans up to your motherboard speed. Great inclusion, a £40 case with this included, definitely not going to complain. I have seen cases that cost twice as much that don't have this option and when mentioned to the manufacturer it was a case of tough it's a budget case you're not having it okay uh, 40 pound cases so half the price and it has it and this is our little uh, three this is effectively a three pin this is for asus motherboards should you be running a gigabyte motherboard you have a little adapter which simply plugs into there and then that then plugs into your motherboard. This just supplies the data. This is just the data line because this is all they need because obviously power is by Molex. There we go. I knew the controller couldn't be perfect. It is Molex powered, not Serial ATA powered. It's not the end of the world, but in 2019, it is a bugbear of mine. I hate seeing Molex ones. I mean, to be honest with you, you're probably going to be running a fully wired power supply in this, not a modular one. So it's not too bad. But at the end of the day, why can't we just have Serial ATA, please? It doesn't cost anything extra to use. So yeah, this will fit uh, pretty much every single type of addressable RGB motherboard. Whether you use this one or this one. Do remember, this is for 12 volt addressable RGBs only. If your motherboard does not have 12 volt addressable, so that is pretty much... Mm, if it's not current, it won't have it, really. Um, X3, uh, the sort of original Ryzen's, they had it. Uh, Z370, Z390 had it. Certain Z270 boards had it. Not all of them. And Z170, not a chance at all. So yeah, if you've got a relatively modern motherboard, you will be able to use this. If not, it's not the end of the world. You can just use this fancy little remote control, which I think thought was actually quite cool. I like this. Um, I did find that, if I'm not careful, it does play around with my background illumination behind me, hence it's currently off, because they do run on very similar frequencies, and you find that pressing a button on this changes that. Happens with RGB strips. So we'll take a quick look at the back of the case. 120mm fan mount. We have a semi-toolless hard drive, uh, hard drive, PCIe slot system here, single screw. Our horrible uh, non- sort of reusable PCIe slot covers. I do despise these things. Um, when it comes to cheaper cases, it happens. It is a 40 pound case. 
I've got to give it a little bit of leeway for its pricing. Always got to give it a little bit of leeway for its pricing. Uh, standard power supply mount, no removal brackets. We'll go in from this one. There is a filter underneath. Now the manual says it's magnetic, but it's not. It's held in with one of those. Uh, held in with one of those horrible sort of clip systems, which I hate, but it does have a filter, so yeah, can't complain too much. It is a cheap case. A couple of little feet on the bottom and everything. All in all, we're looking, we're looking very promising at the moment. On the top is a magnetic filter where you will have space to fit a 120 or 240 AIO or a couple of fans, 120s or 240s, same across the front. Now, there is actually, if I bring this over to me, a small cutout here so that you can fit more, you can actually fit three fans across the front. You will not fit a 360 radiator. Okay, so bear that in mind, you won't be fitting 360 rads because this cutout is an inch wide. You'll fit, I can show you, you'll just about fit a fan down there. You will not get fan and radiator. It's not the end of the world though. To be honest with you, you're not going to be spending 100 and, what, 130, 140 pounds on a 360 AIO in a case that costs 40 quid. So yeah, you will fit 120s or 240s front, uh, well, obviously front you'll fit 120 or 240, top 120 or 240, and on the rear you could fit just a 120 AIO. To be honest with you, when it comes to 120 AIOs, I don't really think there's much of a place for them because I do think for the same amount of money you can get as good or in fact sometimes even better performance just from a decent air cooler. Now, air cooler support is right the way up to 170 mil, so that does mean that the infamous Cooler Master 212 Hyper Evo will fit this case. It is pretty much the best, or it is the, the benchmark when it comes to cheap, decent aftermarket AIO coolers. Uh, AIO coolers? Air coolers. Uh, smaller things like the little Be Quite Slim, which I love because it's so easy to fit, will fit without a problem. So, yeah. And cooling support is actually quite well. There, like I said, there is actually intake across the bottom. It is a good sort of couple of inches deep, decent amount of intake, so that a decent, uh, a half decent AIO shouldn't have any problems with breathing. Front panel, should you wish to remove it, does just pull off. But do bear in mind that the cables for the front IO will be coming with it. There is, of course, a full power supply shroud across here. There's actually a couple of mounting holes here for mounting an SSD or a, a hard drive as well. Should you wish to mount one on the top, weirdly, can't say I would. Uh, cable routing, I did mention earlier, there's no rubber grommets, but we do have a couple here for our 24 pins and things like that. Front IO, there's even a nice little hole at the top here for your 8 pin EPS for your power supply. Uh, power supply, P uh, CPU. My mouth today is just all everywhere. Um, uh, it's been a busy week, what can I say? All in all though, the P10 sync, I've got to say, it's a £40 case. I must remember, it is a £40 case. And at £40, it's good. It's tempered glass, it's got an RGB syncable controller that will sync with your motherboard. It comes with an LED strip at the front, it comes with a nice RGB fan at the back. And extra fans for their controller, You please do remember, you cannot use anything but the Sahara con uh, fans with this controller. It does use a proprietary cabling and connector system where basically the RGB and the fan and everything are all in there. But they're eight pound each, and the PWM syncs up as well with your motherboard. Yeah, um, I actually must say, if you are seriously in the market for a budget case, now I'm talking sort of not bottom of the barrel. You can buy cheaper cases, but if you are on a low budget build where you want a bit of RGB, obviously it's 2019 and gaming, you've got to have a little bit of illumination. Yeah, definitely do bear this in mind because. If you were to buy a similar price case from a competitor, you would be sacrificing the controller, the fans, the LED sync. You wouldn't be getting any of that for this budget. So by the time you've added maybe a couple of extra front fans, you're looking at the best part of, say, £55. You're not going to get this amount for that money, especially not when you take into account that it syncs up with your motherboard and the PWM syncs up and everything as well. All in all, I've got to give the P10 a massive thumbs up. I must admit, when they first sent it over, I did pick it up and go, it's cheap. It does feel a little bit cheap. It is very, very light. And the plastics are very plasticky. But it's solid. Yeah, there's no sharp edges or sharp corners. Everything is has been done well. I've 
definitely built in much cheaper feeling cases that have probably cost me twice as much in the past. So yeah, I'm gonna give the, big, the, the P10 Sync a big thumbs up actually. Like I said, I was dubious, but if you are in the market for a cheap case, you want some RGB illumination, check it out. I'm gonna put a link into the description down below as to where you can buy one. And on that note guys, that is me for today. So if you've liked this video, big thumbs up. If you didn't, big thumbs down. Any questions in the comment, I always do my best to answer. And on that note guys, I will be back again next week. So do remember, subscription, notification, Make sure you get reminded that I have put another video up every Saturday, 6 p.m. And I will see you all again next Saturday. Bye for now.